、皆さんこんばんは。北海道新聞の関口と申します。あのえっと、今日はこういう場所でこういう機会に発言していただく。Good evening, everyone. I am Sekiguchi from the Hokkaido Shinbun newspaper. Thank you for inviting me. I am not a medical expert, so I am not sure if I should be the one to speak here, but I hope I can say something that will be helpful to you all. こんな不正義があるこんな不条理があるこんな悲しいことがあるあるいは逆にこんな素敵な取り組みがあるあニュースペーパーリポーターのジョブは、うん、リポーターのイベントの世界だったのです。あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなたは、あなんかちょっと言い訳っぽくなるんですけど、だから自分自身がこう専門家でなくて、なかなかいろんな人が、ね、人のふんどしで進もうと言って、ですから、自分自身がこう専門家でなくて、Today, I do not have any specialized knowledge about overdiagnosis of thyroid cancer, so I will talk by conveying what I have heard from, for example, Dr. Midori Carlos, Takano, and Oturu. Let me introduce myself. I am 53 years old and from Osaka. I first covered nuclear power plant in 2007, when I was assigned to the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry. I have been covering nuclear power plants for over 15 years while also covering other topics. Since the Great East Japan earthquake, I have been visiting Fukushima, mainly in the Hamadori area, almost every month. I have been to the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant more than 20 times. I also went to cover the Prefectural Oversight Committee for Fukushima Health Management Survey, POCF. It is the same for a newspaper company, but when I joined the company, the circulation was about 1.2 million copies, but it has gradually decreased and is now about 800,000 copies. It is a newspaper company that is defined as a block paper that is in the middle between national newspapers such as Yomiuri and、uh, Asahi and local newspapers such as Fukushima, Miyu, and Minpo. A newspaper company of that size was just right for me to cover. For example, in a national newspaper, the person in charge of nuclear power plants and the person in charge of victims would be different. However, in the case of Hokkaido Shinbun, I am left in charge of everything. So, I can cover the topics freely according to my interest. I think I should state my opinion first. I think nuclear power plants should be stopped. There are two reasons for this. The first is that if an accident were to occur, the damage would be too great. Or the effects would last for too long. I cover Fukushima every month, and when I give lectures in Hokkaido and other places, I use this photo. Do you know what it is? I'm sure many of you will recognize it. But if you zoom out, it will look like this. It's a row of cherry trees in Tomioka town. This row of cherry tree is divided halfway through, so you can enter the front side but not the other side of the barricade. 
This photo was taken quite a long ago. The barricades are go now and you can enter now. I show this photo when I give lectures in Hokkaido, but many people in Hokkaido think that since it's been four to five years since the nuclear accident, uh, most of the things have been sorted out by now. I explain that there are still people who can't go home and that we don't know yet what will happen with the decommissioning of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. I visit Fukushima every month to convey these things to the people of Hokkaido. The second issue is that the problem of radioactive waste disposal has not been resolved. In Hokkaido, the construction of a disposal site for high-level radioactive waste is being considered in two locations. I have been covering this issue since 2007, and since it is related to Hokkaido, I am very interested in it. That was a long introduction, but I would like to begin today's topic, overdiagnosis of thyroid cancer. I have distributed to everyone a copy of my article by Dr. Midorikawa and a recently published article by Dr. Takano. My thoughts on these issues are the same as those written in these articles. As I researched the topic myself and was convinced when writing these, However, I will show you some article to explain that this was not originally my intention. Since I am the only person who writes articles related to nuclear power plants at the Hokkaido Shinbu newspaper, this article I wrote is the first article for this newspaper. I wrote a one-page article in 2015 for a special features series called Looking at Fukushima, which is still ongoing. In it, I interviewed Hokuto Hoshi, the chairman of the POCF. If you read the article, you will get a sense of what I was thinking at that time. Please look at the last paragraph. The POCF issued an interim report in 2016 stating that it is unlikely that the nuclear accident will have any health effects. But I asked whether the survey was being conducted on the assumption that there would be no effects. In response to this question, Hoshi replied that he had no intention to concealing anything. This is what he actually said, but I deliberately wrote it in the last paragraph. This was written in the way that made the reader suspect that there must be something hidden after all. However, this article also touches on the issue of overdiagnosis. It also presents a comment from Shuji Shimizu of Fukushima University, who said overdiagnosis itself is part of the damage caused by the nuclear accident. This is the first time that the term overdiagnosis have appeared in the Hokkaido Shinbu newspaper. Since then, I wrote some articles comparing the opinions of the two experts. In this article, I interviewed Toshihide Tsuda of Okayama University. After that, I interviewed Dr. Tsugane of the National Cancer Center and Professor Makino, who has submitted papers to a scientific journal published by Iwanami publisher, arguing that 
there are health effects of radiation after the nuclear accident and that overdiagnosis has not occurred. In 2022, when six young people who were found to have thyroid cancer in the thyroid examination in Fukushima became plaintiffs and filed a lawsuit against Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO. I interviewed both Dr. Otsuru and Mr. Ido, the head of the plaintiff's legal team, and wrote an article presenting both sides of the argument. The headline of the articles about doctors Tsugane and Otsuru used the word overdiagnosis. My own writing style on this issue changed dramatically after I interviewed Dr. Midorikawa. This change is summarized in the post-interview notes in this article. It says, until now, I have interviewed people suspecting that the national and prefectural governments were trying to downplay the impact of the nuclear accident. However, recently, I have come to think that there are more deeply rooted problems. For example, the inaction of the government, which is unable to review the silo examination due to fear of being held accountable. Here are some words from Dr. Midorikawa when I interviewed her. Hundreds of children are being examined today. Every in next few days, one child will be diagnosed with silo cancer. When I think about that, I can't just sit back and do nothing. The staff are also people affected by the nuclear accident. We worked hard because we thought the thyroid examination would bring peace of mind. We thought it would be good for the children. But if the staff were to blame for causing harm like overdiagnosis and turning a blind eye to it, it would be unbearable. I don't want anyone to go through that. Hearing these words, I realized that she was truly concerned about the situation. I really want to convey these words to the people of Hokkaido, so I wrote a one-page article about it. Early in the morning, on the day it was published, I received a call on my cell phone from the former director of the Hokkaido Cancer Center. He said, don't be ridiculous. I have written articles criticizing nuclear power plant policies, so I am on good terms with people who advocate an end to nuclear power. I received a call from these people. One of them, who had evacuated from Fukushima on his own said, we will make sure that you will not be able to write article for the Hokkaido Shinbu newspaper in the future. In fact, about a week later, a letter of protest addressed to the president was sent, saying, don't let Sekiguchi write articles. However, my position within the company did not change after all. The most unpleasant thing that happened to me was when I received a postcard addressed to Dear Combated Editorial Member, Yuji Sekiguchi. The postcard had the word traitor written on it in large letters. I was quite disappointed when I saw it. I was often attacked on social media 
and an editor from a magazine sent me a long email of protest. However, I was convinced after listening to Midorikawa's story. And as a result, I wrote the article. So I do not regret writing it. When I interviewed Shuji Shimizu, he told me that he had had a similar experience. I have always criticized nuclear power policy, but as soon as I said that there were no concerns about the health effects of radiation exposure in the end, I was attacked and called a traitor. I was also criticized for underestimating the impact of the nuclear accident. Simiz also said this, I understand the desire to hold TEPCO and the government responsible, but there is no need to exaggerate the health damage in order to criticize nuclear power. And the fact that people are still being forced to evacuate, that intermediate storage facility for nuclear materials are still being built, and that people are suffering the damage of a diagnosis after undergoing the side examination that would not have been necessary if the accident had not occurred, enough to criticize nuclear power policy? And yet, even when Shimizu writes articles like this one, he is criticized. There are several people who are known that we will be criticized if we write articles about them. And I interview such people and write articles, so eventually I often get criticized. This is an excerpt from the book Fukushima Discrimination for Happiness, written by translator Kayoko Ikeda. To those who get angry when we clearly say that the impact of radiation from the nuclear power plant was minimal, as this is an act of the treason to help the government and TEPCO, I want them to also consider how much such information would reassure the people of Fukushima. I agree with this opinion. Finally, I'd like to show you some data. These are the number of the articles that uh, come up when searching each newspaper since 2011. Using the three keywords, thyroid, Fukushima, and nuclear power. I included nuclear power because using only thyroid and Fukushima brings up many unrelated articles. The newspaper with the most consistent article is the Asashi Shimbun. This is a compilation of only the Asahi Shimbun data. There is some overlap between local newspapers, so the numbers are not necessarily accurate. But I think you can see the trend. The number was highest in 2011, then decreased, and then increased slightly in 2016, before decreasing again. These are the number of the searches for article in Hokkaido Shinbu newspaper using the keyword nuclear power. As expected, the number is steadily decreasing. I believe interest in both the POCF and thyroid cancer is steadily decreasing. Here we have changed the search keywords from earlier nuclear power plant to overdiagnosis. Do you think that this is a small number or a surprisingly large number? 
The Tokyo Shinbun article in the fifth column from the left are all critical of overdiagnosis. In other words, they give the impression that there are people who are saying outrageous things like overdiagnosis. So, we are not sure whether this survey is meaningful or not. Even though newspapers are not the only means of disseminating information, but it is obvious that not much is known about overdiagnosis. Newspaper articles are often quoted on social media, so the fact that there are few articles about overdiagnosis suggests that it is not widely known. Even the local newspaper, Fukushima Minpo, shown in the first column of the right, only has this many articles. Therefore, it is necessary for people to become more aware of this issue. There were almost no messages for silent experts, so I would like to introduce the following article. I think what Dr. Ochi says in this article is what I want to convey. I want all research, investigations, and information to be used to protect the health of residents, not to push someone's point of view. I hope that inaction Postponement and experts' evasion of responsibility will not let the younger generation of Fukushima suffer damage that they should not have to endure in the first place. This concludes my presentation.